I'm Dr. Tom Anderson. Yes, and I'm Maureen Anderson, and we are so excited about our show today, yes, aren't we? Yes, we are. Uh, and we... things we're going to share with them about finance. Yeah. If you hang on and listen, I believe this series particularly yes, yes. will change oh, your yeah. life. Yes. This is the book, Becoming a Millionaire, God's Way, is something that I wrote, and uh, it is an exciting book, changing a lot of lives and having a tremendous effect on people's thinking and processing concerning prosperity and concerning wealth in the body of Christ. And uh, God, you know, I, I happen to grow up in a very uh, destitute way. I grew up without electricity or indoor plumbing. Or, I know. Uh, my dad bought a line check for $50, pulled it over a foundation in northern Wisconsin. And that's what I grew up in all 18 years before I joined the service. And so uh, I understand poverty when people say, well, Maybe you uh, grew up uh, uh, blessed. No, I grew up in poverty. And I, w I decided at an early age that I wanted to make sure I got out of it. I had the opportunity once over at my uncle's house who had electricity and a television. Yeah. They had uh, Sky King on, yeah. uh, was on. And I went, wow, there's planes and people and things out there that I have never seen. And there's a different way of life. Yeah. And uh, so I began a quest uh, through hard work yeah. for a number of years trying to break that poverty. make a living, break yeah. out of that poverty. Yeah, but it didn't work because you had a spirit of poverty yes. on you. from generations. I actually did, Why a, did, you, yeah. I did a study from 1804. Oh. All of my ancestors were dirt poor farmers yeah. going all the way back to 1804. Yeah. And so yeah. it was something that was innate in my nature and in my DNA. And, and it was something your, that had to be changed. Once it came into your, the kingdom of God, I needed to connect it to his DNA nature. DNA, which is certainly the power of blessing because he wants us to live a blessed yeah. life. So it was really interesting. There, uh, You were going, I would just go back to when God gave you the book. Yes. Because being in poverty and, and uh, when God spoke to our heart, we moved out of Wisconsin to 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 Arizona where we live now and the and, Lord led uh, us here yeah and not and knowing why exactly no we didn't know why and so then the Lord gave us a scripture right away He said and this is in Psalms one twenty two nine says seek my prosperity for the sake of the house of the Lord and uh, we had gotten saved and we were saved for a few years and we had been believing for poverty because we were in a really church. good at it. Yeah, yeah, and we were good. We were poor. We were happy. Yes, and we were happy because we just wanted to know about Jesus. Yep. And so then when we got that scripture, we said, oh my goodness, we don't want to be materialistic. You know, we were, we were in that mindset, but oh, for God, we would do it. And so uh, we were hearing about the, the power of your confession from, from uh, Charles, the, Capps. Charles Capps and then Kenneth Copeland and Gloria and all these faith people. We began to hear and read their books and we wrote out the scriptures, didn't we? And uh, we also made a tape. Back there was tapes. It was 19, uh, well, in the 1976, 77, yeah, it was right in there. Yeah, second tape. Yeah, so we made the, that. Yes. And then Phone we, messaging. Yeah. And uh, uh, so we just totally gave ourselves to that very word of God, not knowing that God had brought us here to build a $23 million church. We had to break that poverty out of our life. Well, while we were in that process, and uh, uh, Jesse DePlanis asked you to come do uh, TBN with him, and yes. you will want to tell him about that yeah, story? Yes, so I'm, I'm flying down to Dallas uh, for uh, the opportunity to, to be on a show with yeah. Jesse DePlanis on TBN, and we were I was excited about it. Yeah. And uh, when I got onto the plane, um, and I stepped up to where my seat was, um, I heard this voice in my head saying, Many are teaching my people to prosper, very few are teaching them how. And I went out loud, I went, well, Lord, that's me. I teach people to prosper, but I'm not going into the detail. And, and the people that were around me thought, who was he talking to? It was kind of an yeah. embarrassing moment. And so I sat down in my seat and the Lord gave me 12 titles that are in this book. Uh, these 12 titles became 12 chapters. And so I, I call it a book inspired by the Lord, not inspired by me. Uh, it is a different look at the Word of God that God really desires for us to be blessed and live in His blessing and to live in health and live in wealth and have joy and yes. live in peace and, and experience favor with God and favor with man. And uh, so I, I sat, I got, uh, did the show, but on my way there, uh, we had to stop over in uh, uh, Albuquerque or yeah. El Paso. I've never been absolutely sure which, which one it was. 
So many times when I give the testimony, it comes back and forth. But nonetheless, when I walked through the airport changing planes, uh, I saw a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I thought, wow, that's kind of along the line God's talking about. It was maybe a secular book, but I, I bought it and I consumed it before we landed in, in uh, Dallas and read it. It was a book by, written by Robert Kiyosaki. Dynamic book. If you have never read it ever, I encourage everyone to read that book just as a change of mentality and uh, uh, come out of the religiousness and realize that God really desires for us to prosper yes, and be yes. blessed. And so when I got home, uh, I taught uh, the series. I yes, taught a series did. out of the 12 chapters and our church grew 40%. Our income drove, grew over 40% as well, uh, just in a few weeks. And wow. it was an amazing thing because the book is based on how to get money to you, not how to get money from you. And that's the premise of the book and that's what I'm we're going to be talking about over the next few weeks. And so it's fascinating that God gave this to me one chapter at a time. I taught it. It was powerful. And when I finished teaching it, uh, I was standing outside my office and uh, there was two or three people that were standing there with me. And it just came out of my mouth that the Lord said, I want you to write it now. Time Warner will buy it from you. Um, you'll sell over a million copies. Uh, and and Robert? it was just a, and, a, Robert and Robert Kiyosaki would write the foreword, yeah. and I went, Robert Kiyosaki, I don't know who, where, I don't even know where he's at or who. Yeah. And uh, come to find out in the next board meeting, I was telling him the word that I got, and we'd already started writing the book. And uh, one of my board members said, Oh, well, uh, I know Sharon Lecter. I've worked with her son. Uh, and prayed with him over some issues. And uh, she wrote the book for Robert Kiyosaki. And uh, actually he wrote it, but she re-edited it. Yeah. And uh, he said his office is, Robert Kiyosaki's office is in Scottsdale. We're in Mesa, it's only about 30 minutes away. And I went, oh, this is just overwhelming. And so I took a manuscript of the written book and I took it up to him, made an appointment, a reservation with yeah. him. And we got to sit down and talk with Robert and Kim. And, and uh, he said, any preacher that would preach prosperity, <laughs> I'm all in. And he read it and he wrote the foreword uh, yes. for the book. Did and, he give the uh, title of the book, honey? Becoming a Millionaire God's, God's way. God's way. And that was the title God gave you yes. to write because it's His way, it's God's way. Because God gave you the whole thing. Well, He gives wealth without sorrow. Yes. The world can give you wealth, but it comes with a lot of fear and sorrow and yeah. worry and concern yeah. about loss and et cetera. So yeah. doing it God's way is really powerful. And uh, that's what the book's about. It really gives permission chapter by chapter from, from the Lord, I believe, that He desires for you yeah. to be blessed. And that's, those are the things that we want to teach and share with yeah. you. Now, the word that we got was yeah. Psalm 122 yeah. in verse 9, you said. Yes. And, and it was say, real, that, say that scripture. Yeah, I'll so say it here. again. Psalms 122, 9. And now, you know, they the go in. Say? Well, be seek my prosperity for the sake of there the house go. of the Lord. And so what happens here is that over time, they've changed the translation of how it says it. So I was able uh, um, to find it. I think it's, uh, you have to go back to the 80, 84 tra uh, uh, version of, of the NIV to get that exact the same. Version. Yeah, yeah. So they don't change that word. They got rid of the word prosperity and put something else in there, goodness or something. But anyway, that's the very scripture God spoke to us, us yes. and we had to go look for it because we, we didn't we know where it, it was when he said that to us. And when we found it in the NIV, it was interesting because, you know, it was not in the King James. It was in that, that translation. And so that was our journey as we began to confess the word, as we looked up all the scriptures. So some of the scriptures on prosperity, I have a prosperity cards that I put together because the power is in the word. What you speak is what you get. We felt and really good about seeking prosperity for the sake, sake of, of the house, house of the Lord. Of the Lord. And when you do, he doesn't yeah. take all of the prosperity. No. He desires his share of the prosperity. Yeah. And the purpose of your heart is to build, build. his kingdom. Yes. Then he, the blessing becomes overwhelming and the finance begins to flow to you and finance has yeah. the ability to flow through, through you. you. And so we, as we began to read the word, you know, of course, of what a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So this was the changing of our heart. And the Bible talks about our thoughts that take your thoughts captive for, you know, 
and yes. that how important it is. Yes. And the word says, you know, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we were spending our days renewing our mind. And some of the scriptures, scriptures. I, can, I can read them and I can say yes. them by heart because I said them for years. Yes. You know, the Bible says uh, the wealth and honor comes from the Lord. The Bible says that wealth a wealth and riches shall be in your house. The Bible says the blessings of the Lord brings wealth and he adds no sorrow to Amen. it. The Bible says that God, that God bestows wealth on you and fills your treasures to full because you love him. And so these Amazing. are the words of the Lord uh, and so many more scriptures. There's just so many. I have a book, a confession book that brings out all the wealth of God and the, and the prosperity of the Lord so that we can get the word in us. And it's so important to understand we're not the love of the money is the root of all evil. Oh, yes. So, but the word of God does say this in James 2. It says that if somebody comes to you and they're in need and and uh, they need clothing and they and, and food, food and they need they, mm -hmm. they they they're in need of things that they the essential needs that they need and you say, well, go and be full and I'll pray for you. He says, where is the love of God in that? And so we realize. They just say go and be fed, and you don't give them anything. Yeah, because you have nothing to give them. You got nothing to give them. And so what? 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 What you have to see with prosperity is this: is that on one side, you know, of money is is the love of money for yourself is the root of all evil. But then on the other side of the coin, that if you are you love the kingdom of God and you want it to be advanced worldwide, and your heart is is in that, you know. And, and so and you, want to you want to build churches and you want to help orphanages and you want to help the, the people that need it. And so you want your money to expand God's kingdom and his ways worldwide. Then you've entered into the love of God. Yes. So having wealth represents the love of God when you're using it for his kingdom. But he's already given you all the wealth. Wealth yes. is already yours in the mm -hmm. kingdom because, you he know, he finished Jesus, it through a foundation yeah, of time. Because the Bible says Jesus became poor that you might be rich. And so he wants us, you know, you know, to have that. Well, when was he poor? He was poor at the cross. Of only Calvary. at the cross. Because the word can only be poor at the cross. The word is the word is not poor. It's wealthy. It holds the, the word whole universe of God. together. Yeah, and so we have to understand that wealth. You know, we have to get rid of the religion and the legalism and even the fears of our heart, and allow the wealth to happen in our heart because. We are seeking first the expansion of God's kingdom worldwide and His righteousness. And that is part of the book is yeah, seek you the prosperity for the sake of the house of the Lord. But it also is about we have to have an attitude of wealth that you have to develop and change the attitude of religion and your heart. There's so much been taught about poverty and lack and et cetera, and that's what. So tell us about yourself and how did you get out of poverty? How did this, I had to because confess. you know, can I just real, really finish this part here? Yes. Okay, is that when God gave us that word, the first thought that went through my mind was that we had been married five years by, no, probably 10, close ten to 10 years yeah, then. Ten years. And uh, I thought to myself, you know, I came from wealth. My, my father was raised with butlers and maids, and I've never had a thought of lack. Even though yes. when, when there's been times there was lack, I, it, it doesn't register in me. And so I know I have a real gift of faith when it comes to wealth. But I, I thought to myself, oh my goodness, it would be a miracle. I had tremendous faith for poverty. <laughs> I know, be a miracle if he could ever come into out of the poverty thinking that he had because it was so evident. Every thought he had was poverty. So now you want to go and tell him about it? About how you came out of poverty? So poverty, I had to deal with it on a, on a heart level. And that's why I was going to say that um, we seek a wealthy heart before a wealthy wallet. Yes. And that's a saying from another book. But it is really important that this book is designed to begin to change the perceptions of your heart. The Lord gave me a word years ago that said, perceptions are formed by an ounce of information and changed by a ton. And so once you've formulated an, a belief system in your heart, it may take, if it's wrong, it may take years, or it may take a lot of confession, a lot of work to get rid of that old perspective and get the correct one according to the Word of God, or get the truth 
Truth is where life is. Jesus said, I am the way, the life, and the truth. No one comes to the Father except through. So it's through the truth and oh, understanding truth from the yeah. Word of God. So this book will help you in the transition of your heart and changing things in you. So it is developed for the soul and for the soulish change yeah. so that the Spirit can quicken your mortal body with everything your hands touch will yes. prosper. And you know, if you're seeing poverty out here, then there's poverty in here because what's, what's out here tells you what's in here. And so as you put the word in there, then the Holy Spirit has something to work with. It's good, that word's going to produce after its kind, but you have to get rid of the doubt and unbelief and the, and the spirit of poverty in, in your own life and let the Holy Spirit reveal to you. You know, I like the thing is ask why. Holy Spirit, because he's your teacher, he's your guide, He's your counselor, and he intercedes for you, leads you and truth. leads you to the truth. And he's right there to, to, to reveal to you the truth of the situation. And, and so uh, anyway, but you know, it's so interesting because I grew up with my husband is that uh, I, who doesn't have electricity? I mean, he didn't have electricity and he didn't have indoor plumbing. And so it was like he did come from so much poverty. He was in, in high school before you got electricity and plumbing. So yeah, anyway. We used to take, we used to take <laughs> bales of straw around the foundation of the house to keep the snow from blowing. Yeah, I know. So you're talking poverty. Was. So uh, pray Anyway, so in order to change my heart, and that, because of the poverty mentality that I had or the perceptions that I had, it became very important for me to confess what God says about wealth. And that would be your starting point uh, based on wherever you might be in the Lord. But starting to confess what God says about wealth. I know you've heard all of the stuff they talk about anti-prosperity. But what does God really say about prosperity? Yes. First of all, you need to understand the word shalom and the word uh, prosperity and the word blessed all have the same connotation from Greek to the Hebrew, which all of them mean health, wealth, joy, peace, and highly favored. Now, you can come against prosperity on the level of money if you want, and people have written and became very wealthy on books on anti-prosperity, but they don't understand all of prosperity. Who yeah. doesn't want health? I Who doesn't it. want joy? Who doesn't want peace or favor? Our love. So you can't just leave one out yeah. and pick on it. It blessed, which is what God did in the foundation of time when he made male and female in his image, he blessed them. Blessed health, wealth, joy, peace, and highly favored is God's intention for his people. Yeah, and the first word, like you said, they said to Adam and Eve is be blessed. So blessed is so important that through the death, burial, and resurrection, uh, the Word of God says that, you know, and we know Deuteronomy 28 says this, uh, if you fully obey the Lord your God, uh, uh, then all these blessings will come upon you. And he, I will set you far above all the nations. And I will make you the head and not the tail, the, uh, the above and not beneath. I will, uh, all your hands, whatever it touch will be blessed. It says the enemy will come in you in one, one direction, but he will That's flee right. in seven. And so these blessings come upon you because Jesus, now you can't fully obey the Lord your God. So don't get into that pride. Don't get into no. that. Jesus, y'all. Yeah, we don't look at ourselves. We look at the word of God to Christ Jesus. And we know that Jesus fully obeyed the Lord your God. He already fully for us. He already did it because he said it was finished and he fulfilled the word of God. And so I look to Jesus. Oh, Jesus, you did that. Not looking to me because I keep my eyes on Jesus, the word, and I give him the glory and the credit for the obedience. Now I receive that and I believe that word then works through me to create that obedience in my life, yes. but it's not me, it's him in me doing that. And so, so we see that blessings are ours. God wants us to live in the blessings and Jesus paid the price so that we could live a blessed, blessed life. But we have to get rid of 
the, the perceptions in our heart, the baggage, I always say the baggage that has been deposited there that, that in our subconscious, or I call it the computer that is there that's running our life because we believe in those, those, that poverty. We believe in that, that God doesn't want us to have any money. We, we have fear about money because, oh, I don't want to love it because it's the root of all evil. Well, we're not talking about loving money. We're talking about loving the kingdom and, and loving people. That's right. And uh, if it's your neighbor house burns down, uh, do you have the money to help them rebuild their home and, and get them back on your feet? That's we what we're talking about. We rebuild churches all over the world yes. because oh. we gained yeah. finance. And that's what we're saying here too, is that once we came into wealth, we were able to build a $23 million church and we were able to build houses all uh, and churches all over the world and uh, give into orphanages. And, and so because we had the wealth, we could uh, uh, help uh, well, just extend, all over the world. Extend the kingdom of God. Yes. And so what I started to do, and I did it for almost a year, and I don't want you to think you have to do it for a year, but w there was no one to teach us at that time, no one to they be able to be mentored by. And so through this program, we're hoping well, we, had, we can shorten the time up for you. But for me, I had to confess it in order to get so much generational <laughs> poverty out of me. I, I spoke words like this, but I would take a scripture or two a day and through the day, just speak it out loud, speak it wherever I went. Uh, and, but for a process of a year, I became ri rich and my wealth continued to grow until I became very wealthy. And that, that, that's in Genesis 26. So I remember the Lord my God, for it is He who gives me the ability to produce wealth and so confirm His covenant to me. I mean, it, these are so powerful scriptures that you reprogramming your processing center or your soul on getting rid of all of the old perceptions that you had and the water of words begins to wash out the junk yeah. and replace it with light and with the word of God. And as that, and, and once I got through this, I had Maureen pray for me and at, there were, it was a transitional point where this tremendous weight lifted oh, off I from know me. It from this mentality of work hard to rich. And I, I gained not only work hard, but I gained something called work smart. And it was amazing Wisdom. the transition that then took place. I actually felt like I could do anything in through Christ who strengthens me or Christ in me working through me. Could I could be successful at absolutely anything. All because of the Word of God and what it did in my heart. I know, changed your life. And it's life. still that way today. I haven't ever lost it. I know that I, I know that it's Christ in me and therefore I cannot fail. I don't worry about risk. I step out in faith yeah. and it's amazing the things that yeah. God has done. In fact, in just this last year, uh, year, well, just a little over a year now, but I went to the Lord and just asked Him, I need a new testimony for the book. And I had, a, I had a testimony that, that is in the book, but I wanted, I wanted a new one to be able to share. And so I asked the Lord about it. I said, can we get a new testimony? I'm raising, is it possible for, for me to make a million dollars in a year? And the Lord said, you're on. And I went, okay. And so in a process of nine, actually nine months, months we yes. produced $1.1 million during COVID flipping houses. And government didn't give us any government money. They did give me a, a $75 check, but I, I ripped it up. In fact, I they want a lot of tax money yeah, from me yeah. now. So but anyway, <laughs> so, it's <laughs> amazing what God does and what God yeah, can do if you are willing to step out and allow Him to prosper you. We're going to continue this series. We're going to look at some things next time dealing with uh, right from the foundation of time in Genesis chapter 1. It gives us our purpose on earth. Uh -huh. And we're going to sh share it. So many people looking for their purpose on yeah. earth. And right away he tells us what he, why he created us and the purpose. And he gave us something for us to be doing here on this earth to produce prosperity on this earth and spread his gospel worldwide. We'll share that yeah. with you next time. Well, but if you, I go ahead. really, really want to share here too is that it's so important for you to understand that God blesses the work of your hands. And so not only does he want to give into the kingdom financial bless into the kingdom to see it expand worldwide, but he wants you to also plant in the earth so that he can then multiply that, that investments that you are putting in the earth. And he leads and guides us. You want to be spirit led, though. And you have I to really be led by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, let's all look. of this, not led by 
the media or what looks good or don't go yeah. there or a friend that told you, don't go there. Yeah, we've seen people make so many mistakes because they go by their intellect. No, 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 no. You have the Holy Spirit and he, he will, will lead, lead you, you to, to the right investment. That's right. And uh, he'll tell you, no, no, no. And he said that. I will tell you, if you go left or right, I will say to you, uh uh, you get that check in your spirit. No, nah, it looks good, but the Holy Ghost is saying no. And look for the Holy Ghost, that, that freedom inside and that life that you feel that says, this is God. And you go with God when you start investing in the earth. Uh, I'd like to have you pray with them about getting we free do. of poverty, that spirit of poverty. We're gonna pray that and then we're gonna pray the sinner's prayer. Yes. If you have never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you wanna do that first. So right now, yeah. if you've never received, received Christ, I'm not talking about religion, I'm talking about any of that. I'm just talking about changing your destiny from darkness to light. Would you be willing to do that? Pray this prayer with me and I tell you what, your life will never be the same if you pray this prayer. And I'm not talking about joining church, I'm not talking about religion or any form of it. I'm talking about a relationship with Christ Jesus personal. Just receive Jesus, Re just repeat after me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin. And I ask you, dear Jesus, come into my life, come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you need to let somebody know that you received Christ today. Most yeah. important decision you've ever made in your entire lifetime. Yeah. You just become part of eternity with Father God at that point. And for those of you that have been listening to the show and are born again. I'd like to say one thing here too. Be good to also read the uh, faith books. You know, uh, faith is, 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 gives you the access to these things that we're talking about. And so we have Kenneth Copeland uh, books on prosperity and Gloria Copeland and, and many others, yes. uh, Jesse and, and yes. Andrew yes. Wilmax. And these kind of people have books that will, will also uh, give you revelation and what God has for you. Amen. Do okay, you want to pray Buddy. with them? We just want to pray a quick prayer for those that are dealing with poverty. Just received today. Father, we just pray in the name of Jesus for each that are listening, if they're struggling with poverty and just enough and wandering in the wilderness and not able to get into the promises of God, I ask that revelation take place in their hearts and their minds and that you set them free by the Spirit of God, free from wrong ideas, beliefs, and perceptions and begin the process of rebuilding in them that you desire for them to be blessed every single day here on this earth in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you next time as we look at your purpose. Yes, we love you. Becoming a millionaire God's way shows you the perfect plan for wealth in your life and comes directly from God's word. This book is about getting money to you, not from you. Thousands of people have used the principles in becoming a millionaire God's way to see real financial change in their lives. You can become a master of money and step into a life of generosity and freedom. Becoming a Millionaire God's Way, Dr. Tom Anderson's bestseller. Find this resource and more at thewordforwinners.com.